And we're live! Get out of here, Chris. Hello, all, and welcome back to the Fast <laughs> Furious Fall feature. Uh, wow, what is more exciting than that intro? I can't get over it. It's just We were so, just talking about it. Just yeah, so cool. metal. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us uh, here. We're so excited to be back. Uh, it's been a few weeks off for us, but the show has been trucking along all fall long, which I guess... This is kind of the end of it. This and is the final Fast Fall Furious. And the final one of the year, I mm -hmm. think, which is sad for a lot of people. Why are you clapping? That's a terrible, terrible news. Uh, <laughs> but we're really excited. Uh, our guests tonight, Kevin and Sean, uh, are going to be talking about a lot of really awesome stuff from Palladium. Uh, kind of, we're going to talk about where the company came from, kind of what put you on the map and where we're going right now. Uh, but before we get to that, if you are new to this program for some reason, uh, you're really late to it because I just said it's the last one. So you're, you're coming right at the tail end. But we've been doing this all fall long uh, where we're interviewing people that are associated uh, with this company as well as people who have just helped make us where we are, you know. Uh, and uh, you can go back and watch any of the videos on demand on our YouTube channel which this should be on right now. And make sure you like the video and all that kind of nonsense because mm -hmm. this is the 2020s and all that kind of promotional shit you should be doing all the time. So go to that, <laughs> like, share, subscribe, whatever that bullshit is. Comment, interact. Comment, interact, all that kind of stuff. We got a lot of people popping off in the chat tonight. John Doom is back as always. Tank the Frank. Look at all these wonderful people. Great. Look, everyone's saying hi to you guys. Uh, so yeah, of course, welcome to the show. Uh, for those who don't see the names because it keeps popping up, my name is Harlan. This is my wife, Joe. And uh, to start things off, Kevin and Sean, why don't you tell the people at home who you are and, and why you're here tonight? You want to go first? Sure. I don't know why I'm here. I was just minding my own business, and Sean grabbed <laughs> me and said, do an interview. He's getting older, and there are so <laughs> oh, oh, oh. We're getting there, are we? <laughs> Uh, that's it, oh, guys. No. <laughs> Below the belt, Too off real. the top. <laughs> yeah, so this is the guy that started it all. Uh, Palladium Books and Riffs and Palladium Fantasy Role Playing Game and Heroes Unlimited and TMNT and, and Robotech RPG RPGs. And, and yeah. Yeah, I've done, uh, I've done a lot of stuff. I've been around for, what, Palladium is 41 years old right now. And wow. we've done that makes you 40, even like, five. You know, you're still... Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone's buying that with yeah. this white hair. but uh, At least you have hair. Yeah, well... Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I, I got into gaming uh, back in uh, 1980 and roughly 1979 with D&D. &D, and... Uh, fell in love with role playing i just loved the whole concept of being able to assume any kind of character play any kind of scenario in any kind of world and you know riffs is kind of the culmination of that where you know whatever you want to play um you can uh, pretty much in that environment and it all feels plausible and fun and action-packed and crazy so you know so that's awesome i mean obviously like all of us you know we we have an entry point most of us D D. so that kind of spawned what came afterwards and we're excited to talk about all that kind of stuff look at this origins award hall of fame in the whoa all right the air just got sucked into the room and sean <laughs> uh what about you i mean you're the other other half on the screen there give us a little rundown of yourself uh, yeah, um, I got involved with Rifts for Savage Worlds. Um, I, uh, I was not on the original development team. That was another Sean, uh, Sean Patrick Fannin. Um, and um, yeah, I, I got involved. There was Sean Patrick Fannin, Sean Tate Bircher, and Shane Hensley, and then Sean Owen Robertson, me. So uh, yeah, I, I needed to use all three of my names uh, when I started publishing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I got involved with Empires of Humanity, um, and it was you know, concurrently being written with uh, uh, Blood and Banes and Arcane and Mysticism. And those were the first three big world books that covered, um, really focused and covered uh, North American uh, lore and, and, and the character options and rules and adventure material for Savage Rifts. And so, um, yeah, I, I got involved with that and I was started working on art approvals uh, with Kevin. Um, and uh, between Kevin and Pinnacle, and uh, and then uh, Shane asked me to take on the role as the uh, the line manager, and we did the second edition of Rifts for Savage Worlds uh, to bring it up. It was the first um, setting that was um, part of the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition, and so that was a lot of fun and a lot of hard work. 
uh, because Rifts messes with everything. Um, <laughs> big robots, big magic, right? Psychic powers, all types of stuff. Um, and so uh, we worked out a lot of those kinks, had a lot of fun with it. And then um, my next book was Atlantis and the Demon Seas. And then um, right now we've got on the Game Changer, we have uh, Terror on the Dark Frontier and Land of a Thousand Islands and Rifts Pawn Set 2. So three big products that I think people will be really excited about. So Oh super yeah, happy we're gonna to talk about all of that. of that. And I'm excited to dive into it for the people who are ready to kind of get to the next phase of their role playing. Yeah. But let's, let's bring it right back, uh, you know, Kevin. So you mentioned that you started this whole thing out, got into D&D, &D. but what, and, and, you know, every time we have somebody on here that's that started their own, you know, movement, as it were, towards their own system or their own sort of, you know, place, um, what what inspired you to do that? What was kind of the big thing? Was it a frustration over the rule set? Was it wanting to make more than the limitations of what you were playing? What kind of inspired you to take that first step into, OK, now I want to do my own thing? Yeah, a, a little bit of both. Um, I, I, I thought. D and D was 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 fun, but it didn't go far enough. I, it, like one of the things that just amazed me about the whole concept of role playing was the depth of story and character that you could do. And I didn't see a lot of the games of the of that era doing that. Um, so I, I really wanted to do that. And then there were all kind of restrictions back then. Like like back then, everyone felt you had to do just one genre. You couldn't mix. Uh, and in fact, early on, there were arguments that you could only do science fiction or fantasy because there was Traveler and there was D&D &D and RuneQuest. And therefore, that was it. And I'm like, that's crazy. Um, so I started, you know, the full round of all kinds of things. I mean, fantasy was my first my first big role playing game um, because I just I love fantasy. And, and you know, my first introduction was D&D. Um, and in fact, originally I was just playing a D and D game and I kept adding things, changing things. And, and at some point my, my gaming group said, Kev, this isn't D and D anymore. This is your own game system. You should clean it up, try to sell it. And I, I did try to sell it. I couldn't find anyone to take it. And so, uh, I'm like, oh, well, and they're like, no, Kev, you've got experience publishing. You should publish it yourself. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't so you didn't sit down and say okay i'm gonna sell a new i'm gonna do you just sort of collected and changed all the rules and then started building your own thing sort of almost secondarily and then people were like hey this is good you need to take this somewhere which yeah, but, you know is unique for a lot of the people we we speak to on here you know so many of them say no i set out to do something and get it to the hands of people but really you kind of became enthusiastic about crafting this personally first and people just sort of enjoyed it as they would play it and, and say, yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah. I never thought about it. That that's, that probably is very different than how a lot of people enter this business. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, we've had a great array of, of many different types. Uh, Shane Hensley or something is the guy. Ah, people keep talking about this guy. Some I Shane guy. That guy is. <laughs> One of the other S names. Another Sean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my question about pinnacle is, why does everyone at Pinnacle have to be named Sean or Shane? Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> Legally, if we want to stay on for another season, we gotta change our names, both Joe and I. <laughs> I'm going I think I'm gonna go with a Shana, yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shauna, Shauna, Shauna. 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 <laughs> yeah, you go for like an old Now, Kevin, when you're talking about like the diversion from D and D, was there a sp specific genre that you really just wanted to experience or were you just kind of remixing the fantasy genre to suit yourself uh i, I yeah i think it was pretty much I, w I was tweaking it to suit myself in, in my gaming group i i was one of the co-founders of the detroit gaming center so we got to see all these different games as they were coming in as they're being released and you know role playing was brand new back then so everything was super exciting and I just, like I said, I just thought it was all very limited. And I, I come from a comic book background. And so to me, everything should have been possible. Superheroes and giant robots and you name it. And, and I started with fantasy. But from the very beginning, I wanted to have a game system. Once I decided to publish, I wanted to create a game system that could include everything and anything. And that gets back to sort of your question, Harlan, about you know, did I want to change things? I, I just, it, 
people were so narrowly focused on the two genres that I actually had to throw a tournament at the gaming center called Magic versus Technology because they said you couldn't combine it. It was impossible. And I'm like, that's crazy. Of course it's possible. You know, and then everything else kind of took off. You know, I mean, everything was kind of organic for, for, for Palladium. It just kind of grew naturally. And, you know, I love comic books. I discovered Ninja Turtles and we released that. That was huge. And then, you know, I love anime and science fiction and I discovered Robotech. So we did Robotech. And then just everything else. And then Rifts was just sort of the culmination of, of all of it to say, here it is in one plausible setting. You can play fantasy, science fiction, horror, post-apocalyptic, you know, whatever you wanted to do, you could do. You know, and it's, it's really interesting because I think there's something really unique in the way that you're describing bringing riffs to the public you know the fact that it was that personal thing because one of the things that i've seen in my own life through role playing and i've been role playing for years as well and even in the comments here you know we have right here we have a special memory from somebody someone else just commented yeah. that it's the only rpg that makes sense to them someone else talks about coming home getting excited to play there seems to be a real passion for riffs and I, and I don't mean that in the way that people are passionate about Dungeons and Dragons but like a personal uh, you know a, a real personal stake at it what to you and I mean obviously you've seen people whether they be at conventions experiencing it and to me it seems very different from an outsider perspective it seems the way that people react to riffs is different than Dungeons and Dragons it seems that people have a very personal approach to it and I'm wondering if through the years, you have any idea why that is? Is there anything that sticks out to you about someone's connection with Rifts that kind of explains that? Yeah, I think there's two things. One, I think our own passion comes across. Um, we're, we're, we're gamers and we produce the kind of games that we would love to play. Mm -hmm. So, so that's part of it. And then I always took a very personal approach. I think is the other equation. Part of the equation is, you know, I always had like little openings and saying, this is what's coming or here's some of the background behind um, the thought process of, of this particular book. And, and I always thought of my customer base as my friends, my fellow gamers, uh, fellow nerds, and I, I just felt really comfortable with that. And I think people picked up on, on that. In fact, I had a number of professionals tell me that I shouldn't do the openings in my book and, and that my writing was, sound, was too personal, that I should be more, you know, arm's length. And I'm like, no. <laughs> but, but yeah, so you kind of put your heart into the work. You know, you, you remove that barrier that a lot of you know, big corporations make, you know, where they're like a Walmart, where they're kind of like, there's no person behind Walmart. It's just a CEO. And that changes yearly. Yeah. You kind of decided. And I mean, I think that speaks to the fact that, you know, you're still involved. You're still there. You're still as involved uh, as you can be when it comes to something that's run this long, which is really admirable. And I think it speaks volumes about the fans who are, you know, appreciative of that too. You know, it's not like, ah, get Kevin out of here and everyone's like oh, yeah, this is amazing we want it too and I'm wondering to bridge now over to Sean I wonder you know coming on to this uh how how did that kind of feel uh was it representative of the experience that you wanted in RPGs or was it something that you were kind of surprised by and you kind of expected a more you know not to knock you know to say oh more corporate structure but were you sort of uh excited uh that it was almost more personal than than you realized? yes um <laughs> so um yeah i mean so i got into this later on um after i i was in the air force um and i went i ended up going back to school using the gi bill and decided i'm going to study whatever i want to study at this point right I'm, i don't want to do what other people t want me to do or tell me to do i don't know um something about that getting out of the military after that. But uh, yeah, so for me, it was one of those things. So my first role-playing experience, so I, I started with Battletech, uh, tactical, you know, combat game, and got, I love, I'm, I'm fairly competitive. Uh, uh, I enjoyed that. I got into some D&D &D with some friends. But the first game that I personally owned um, is somewhere on the shelf, somewhere near here. Anyways, it's, it's uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And so that was my first... I love the Ninja Turtles. I saw the graphic novels and I was like, 
boom, right? And the, the, the role-playing game really tapped into that energy. And I was like, this isn't just kitty stuff. This isn't just we're going through, you know, some old castle dungeon, kicking down doors and stabbing stuff. There was, there was all these heroes and, 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 and personalities and experiences. And, and that really kind of opened up my mind. And I eventually, you know, saw riffs and I was like, I don't know what it is, but I want it. And <laughs> as soon as I get my hands on it, I did. And I, I've played a lot of games. I'm a big gamer. Um, I guess people would say I, I used to run a games workshop store. I, I managed a games workshop store for a while. I used to run an EB games before it was bought by games, uh, GameStop. You know, um, I've, I've been, I've, you know, credits as a play tester on different computer games, but yeah, I, um, I, I always come back to riffs and riffs is always foundational. Um, because it weaves all these different genres together in a really tight tapestry that just it makes makes sense to a lot of uh, the, the I think a lot of the riffs and Palladium fans. Um, and so when I got a chance to uh, meet the Savage Worlds folks and uh, they asked me to get involved with stuff and I was super excited because I love the riffs lore and I love the Savage Worlds game system. Um, it got me gaming again, you know, when you know, especially in fast paced lives where my buddies now only had a few hours at a time. We didn't have a few days at a time during the summer to game. We had a few hours at a time. Um, the so, halcyon days. Right. I know. Right. And so um, I got in, I got involved and, and very quickly uh, it was, it was surreal though, because I was, I was excited to meet Shane Hensley. I was excited to meet uh, Clint Black. I was excited to meet all these people. And then I was excited to mom. I talked to Kevin Sanvita on the phone today, <laughs> you know, and, and it was, it was really nuts. And then, um, you know, well, the, the thing that was really surreal for me was I was getting involved with it. I was having a lot of fun. Um, I got my degree from university of Texas in Dallas in design and production. And it was designed, the program was meant for video games and, and like animated movies, but it's really worked. Um, a lot of the, tr the stuff transfers over. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but yeah, when, when, so last, you know, was last year. Yeah. Um, early last year, Kevin, uh, I was working on starting my own um, RPG company and I was going to keep working on Savage Rifts and start putting out some of my own stuff. And then Kevin asked me to join him at Palladium Books as his business partner. And I couldn't sleep for two days and <laughs> called everybody, all my best, you know, friends and family. And um, long story short, it's been uh, it's been kind of a it's kind of a Willy Wonka or uh, I like to say gladiator, you know, Marcus Aurelius talking to Maximus, you yeah. know, saying, Minus no, I need death, you to right? me. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Well, <laughs> still on the table. I'm not Commodus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah. but yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was a, a really surreal experience. But the thing that I came to realize is it's interesting. A lot of the, the, like our friends, like Alex and Julius and Wayne, they'll tell, you know, but a lot of the original guys in the original campaign will tell you that Kevin had science fiction elements in his original oh, uh, yeah. fan, Palladium yeah. fantasy um, game. Yeah. And he didn't even, you know, he wasn't, trying to bend the genres or anything that's just something that came natural to him and so it's funny because this year at the palladium open house um kevin ran a special game where it was kind of like a a rewind we you got to there was pre-generated characters from the original his original playing group the defilers and i got uh you know zarksar you know julius's old character and 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 we we were playing and and we got to like Basically, Kevin put us in a, a scenario that was really kind of pivotal for his original playing group. But I got to see, like, one guy had a particle beam weapon. Oh, yeah. My character was like this techno wizardry rebuild. He'd been, you know, mauled and rebuilt by some crazy arcane technologist. And it was, you know, and I was like, okay, this, okay, this, this riff's coming from this makes sense. It just took Kevin a while to get there um with his you know formulation of the rules and codifying everything that's how i feel i don't know that's no, awesome that's, that's, that's no, pretty that's really cool. very cool yeah how fun how fun that must have been too, absolutely to to... sean how did it feel coming into work for the first time getting into an industry that you obviously really admired and setting down to work on your first project were you afraid <laughs> of uh playing with the big afraid? boys of messing right? something up or were you like ready to go full of like vim and vinegar like, right. full of big ideas what was kind of your your initiation into the industry 
Yeah. So for me, I had met um, Shane Hensley and um, a bunch of the guys down in Texas um, that worked on ETU um, at uh, Rice University at the Alcon. And I played in a game and they um, one of my buddies, Brandon, his dad uh, is actually uh, part of that whole group. And um, they found out that that we were studying game design and they're like, Shane was like, come have some beers with us. And that was really cool. And and then they said, you got to go out to Chupacabra And so I did. Man. So many <laughs> and, people that we've talked to have yeah. stated that conventions are the place where they make these very pivotal business relationships. Oh, yeah. Right. That and I didn't expect that. Um, I, but it, there are some great conventions to go to if you want to meet people. And it's a great way to meet people. Mm -hmm. um, now, of course, uh, I had, you know, um, they asked me for writing samples and I wrote an adventure. And right. And the interesting thing was I I wrote this this, uh, you know, uh, one Savage Worlds one sheet for Savage Rifts and they paid me and then it never got published. It's still not published. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, I well, maybe they may, I mean, maybe they're just being nice and they pay me 50 bucks or whatever and they're done. And then uh, I remember I was sitting in a, like a marketing class and uh, I saw this email pop up on my laptop from Shane Hensley. Hey, we'd like to offer you the chance to do a book. And I was like, what? So <laughs> wow. I went to, uh, yeah, I went to my, my professor um, and uh, Professor Bro, who you've met. Yeah. And he, uh, he was like, well, there, there's a good offer. It's, you know, there's, uh, it seems very professional. I've heard good things about them. And so uh, I, I was just, I was worried, you know, is this, you know, I didn't, had no idea what made any sense on, on payment and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I was really excited to get involved with it. And I don't know, I wasn't really afraid. Um, I'd seen the Savage Rifts material. I've been playing it for quite a while and I really enjoyed it. Um, and so the main thing is it was just a lot for me, it was a lot of hard work. You know, I was, I was going to school full time um, on the GI bill. I was working part time as a graphic designer um, for one of the organizations on campus, a veterans organization on campus. And then I was um, also writing a book, but I got it done. And um, yeah, it, it was really fun. It, it, it uh, yeah, it was like a chance to, to get out there and show what you're made of, right? And, and see if you have some cool ideas. And um, the, the, the folks at uh, Pinnacle were really great about helping me revise the material and make sure that it fit the Savage Worlds style and um, the adventure material is very, the way that it's written, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's very approachable. So that worked really well for me. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, I just kind of got stuck in with it. So um, it was, uh, it was, it's been a really great experience. And then now over here at Palladium um, as well, I'm kind of wearing two hats. Um, I've been working on Palladium products as well. And it's, uh, it's, I mean, I grew up reading the material, so it, 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 it just seems right to me because I've been immersed in it for so long. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Well, I, I think with Sean, I, I think because he started with Pinnacle and, and they're a good, they're a very good group of people that he kind of, you know, he, he rose pretty quickly within that organization, but I think that gave him the confidence. By the time he came here, I had no sense that he was afraid of anything. I mean, he was just <laughs> excited and like, what can I do? And that was awesome. <laughs> well, it's a really yeah. attractive, you know, personality trait to have, especially when you're a growing business, you know, having somebody on your team that's passionate about the materials, you know, and cares about the, the success of the business, but is also eager to kind of, you know, do shit to get shit yeah. done is like the way yeah, to, to grow. You can thank Staff Sergeant Melvin Chapman from the United States Air Force. Thanks, uh, Melvin. Training. Appreciate seriously, it. Seriously, seriously, they broke they break you down, but um, that I had a, a personality shift that doesn't happen. I mean, if you study psychology, actual personality trait change is fairly uncommon. But one of the ways to do it is something like that. And it for me, I came out of there hard charging. So that's oh, been that's one of those things. I guess maybe they beat the fear out of me or whatever. But. <laughs> Who knows? I'm excited to get out, stuck so in. That's yeah, I guess I'm excited to get stuck in. So, uh, so uh, uh, you know, pivoting back, Kevin, uh, you know, talk to us for the, for those you know in the chat lucky enough to know riffs and kind of have all that you know amazing passionate connection to the material and kind of stuff. I have heard a few people, you know, with, you know, the rumblings of Titan robotics and the kind of whole nature of that. Did you want to talk to the uninitiated about that aspect? Uh, I mean, what would you say? 
about Titan Robotics? Just yeah. like in what way? Yeah, just as like so. a product or? Yeah, I mean, to me, we're kind of getting excited about the prospect, right? We're at the rumblings, we're in the pre-order phase right now. And right. I figured for those who are either aware or unaware, to a platform for you to kind of get people in. You know, someone sits down at your table for Titan Robotics. Right. What's the thing that they're going to be leaving? What's the taste in their mouth? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I think so. So just for anyone who's not aware, we just did a Kickstarter for that. And um, there, there, you know, there's a kind of a lull period where you're waiting for funds to be collected and processed and backers. And so then it's going to be moving into our pledge manager backer kit um, and people can jump in then and, and get involved as well. And it's also going to be going out via retail as well. And uh, one of the uh, for a couple of things, people ask why you need to do a Kickstarter for a book. Well, part of that's because of the rapidly increasing cost of printing. Mm -hmm. And so if we can get, you know, part of this is we had over a thousand backers. Thank you guys very much. And so that helps us have a really solid number we can send to a printer and that then that reduces the price of each unit. So without doing a Kickstarter, we were looking at having to raise prices on the product. So uh, at the same time, that lets us do things that we wouldn't normally be able to do. Um, like foil covers and collectors hardcovers and things like that. So um, we appreciate everybody backing us on that. And um, as far as Titan Robotics as a product, yes, this is a very long awaited product that builds on the original source book one material, Archie, the machine god, and his right hand, hand man, Hagen Lonovich. And then um, it builds on top of that story and the mechanoids uh, and their appearances in Rift Source Book 2, the Shimmerians, which are their army of secret female android warriors um and and now titan robotics is their front organization uh archie's front organization he's this ancient supercomputer from before the time of the rifts uh military supercomputer and he uses titan robotics as his eyes and his ears the his his robot all their all their robot vehicles and power armor suits um have recording gear and spy gear as somebody who worked at the nsa and in, in, in military intelligence that's kind of fun to write about um and uh matt clements did a really great job on the initial manuscript we have a bunch of really killer art from um well a lot of it is, is from uh stephen cummings uh he is a very very talented artist who right now is uh mostly known for his work on uh, Marvel's Star Wars comics. Um, mm. And um, we have uh, Chuck Walton, uh, you know, a bunch of, uh, Mike Majestic did the cover art. We've got a lot of really great talented artists working on it. And so one of the say, cool things- Can is, we see some of some samples of the art? Maybe Chris has something in the background that we can show some people. As he scrambles oh. frantically oh, to try yeah. to find the art. <laughs> Just putting the that. spotlight on Chris. <laughs> I have like a physical art. Like a physical Amazing. Um, I but, have a picture, uh, but it's kind of yeah. Strange. So Ooh, yeah, this there is go. Uh, here we go. Cool. Yeah. This is uh, let's see. Ooh, ooh, there we go. That's Arjun Goodson and his wife Diana, and then um, that is the Myrmidon uh, exoskeleton on the, wow. on, the, on the side here. So I love the detail. Yeah, just a ton. Oh, and here's some of Mike Majestic's initial sketches. Oh, yeah, there's the okay. uh, or some of the cover robot. But yeah, you can throw up the cover art. Thank you. Yeah, that's um, the cover right there. Yeah. Love yeah. It. So, yeah, Tiger Box is pretty dope stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, it's and so part of the cool thing about the way that Palladium works that I've really, really enjoyed is, you know, Kevin started as an artist. I actually, before I got into writing as a kid, I really was more of an art kid. Um, and so the you know so there's a usually a lot of times there's a manuscript or kevin will do a manuscript he'll send it off to the artist or in this case uh matt clements what uh, did it he's a one of our ace writers and um then there's the process of taking a lot of the ideas from the really cool then we send it out to the artist right and so then we're taking that cool art and bringing those ideas back to the manuscript right because maybe it's not exactly the same as it was initially written up or the you know like stephen uh, did some art and it was just so good. He was like, "Well, I just did some extras." <laughs> but, well, yeah, yeah. He, he was so excited about stuff, and and he's telling me how, how much fun he's having with it, and I was giving him these ideas, and I said, "Well, why don't you draw them up, and if we like it, we'll put them in the book." And he's like, "Really?" And <laughs> you know, awesome. I love working with other artists. Yes. And, and you know, we're always looking to create the best product. So if someone comes up with a cool, better idea, we're going to run with it. And in fact, Titan Robotics is kind of that. I think one reason fans are so excited is that um, 
Archie was first introduced in Riff Sourcebook One. So it's like the very first or second supplement to the Riffs RPG. Mm. And, and people just fell in love with with, with Archie and uh you know, and then Sourcebook Two was was more of Archie and Hagen and the Mechanoids and yeah, and you know, so this really goes kind of back to those roots. And, and that was a best selling book. I mean, we sold over a hundred thousand copies wow. of, of Sourcebook One. That's amazing. Uh, too. So you know, this is stuff that people know and love. And Archie's always been kind of this cool, weird because he's not. He's kind of a villain, but he kind of isn't because right. he's he's this artificial intelligence that's kind of gain sentience and he's kind of a he's super powerful because he can make all these robots and stuff and yet he doesn't know what to do with that power and he's kind of scared to go out in the world himself and so it's this cool weird dynamic and, and a very interesting character yeah the best. and and the inter hagen lonovic his his right hand man who is his idea man and helps him formulate all these crazy secret plans but that was when i did my first book empires of humanity that was the the plot point campaign deals with a lot of that. And so mm. it was really interesting because the thread then came through and it was like, oh, Titan Robotics. And so for me, um, one of the fun things to add to what uh, Matt had already worked on was this whole idea of there's this whole new play paradigm where you can now play as a Titan Robotics courier, like a dispatcher for a courier team or a courier team, which is their nice uh, you know, word for their field teams that do wet works and, and assassination and espionage and stuff like that for this unknown machine God. And you can play as these um, human replica androids. Um, so a lot of really crazy stuff, um, but we wanted to make sure it had not just guns and armor and, 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 and you know, but we want to make sure that the lore was great, that there was new ways to play the game or new avenues to explore with, you know, maybe an android that doesn't know it's an android. It, it, it's a human replica. And it so it's jam-packed full of sort of any way that you want to uncover this. Right. There's all types of ways uh, that game masters can bring this into their campaign and their Sorry. world. And and the other great thing is is that um, as part of this, as the first time, uh, really great fan Dan Fredericks uh, suggested and a bunch of other fans were like, yeah, this is a great idea because I didn't know it first. Um, uh, is that we he asked for a conversion document for Savage Rifts. And so we said, okay, you know, that if the fans really want it, we'll do it. And it's been very popular. So um, we're already got uh, the team working on that. So the end of the day, that's, it's about the fans, right? It's like what's right. going to be best for them. And, and that's, right, I think that's because, again, what, what you guys have stood for for a long time, which is great. And there's like 90 plus riff supplements. So it's really hard to catch up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, as working on the, as the Savage Riffs uh, line editor, it's really hard to catch up on that material. So we know that there's certain things that, hey, if we do this now, it's the best way to approach it, right? Um, it's, a, it's, you know, these conversion documents are just conversion documents. So you, in this case, you definitely want the Titan Robotics book, right? Or the initial Palladium books, uh, you know, Sourcebook 1, Sourcebook 2, Shmerian Nation. Um, but, but yeah, that way you can use it in your games and you can play it, so. Speaking of catching up on material, uh, I, I understand there are some uh, deals happening right now, some mega bundles that are uh, available <laughs> for a limited time. Oh, yeah. uh, if perhaps people wanna pick up some of these exceptional source books this is a good question actually someone said john doom asks john doom will and someone who has a passing familiarity with riffs and more often plays in the savage world system will the current bundle of holding be useful to me hmm. yeah i would i would say for sure so one of the things that is really important is that the savage riffs books for any palladium or savage worlds fans you know to understand is they're not designed to replace the palladium books they're designed to supplement and kind of streamline the entry point and act as a, a nice uh, place to have expanded adventure material and, um, you know, kind of interlace the world building because it's really deep world building. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, with um, with my first book, you know, there's this whole section is the books that I referenced, the titles of the books I referenced from the original Palladium books. Wow. to work on just this book um that's the primary ones right there's some that i took notes from that i didn't list there um because it, they only had a few factoids or small bits of things so that's one of the things that i would say is that yes john doom um 
I would say that this mega bundle of holdings is a great opportunity to get your hand on these PDFs that can really expand the details of what you're doing. So, for instance, if you really like juicers um, from the Savage Rifts books, then Juicer Uprising is great because it'll tell you all about juicer sports and juicer slang and how the different where the ju different juicer treatments were pioneered and how they came about uh, the juicer culture. It also offers a couple more adventures. And so you can use the adventures straight out of that book. The uh, with the with the uh, the lax and all that kind of stuff. No, so that's the cool thing is, is the setting material can be used with the, either set of rules. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you prefer Pinnacle's rules, that's awesome. Run with it. If you prefer our rules, that's great, too. And, and likewise, you can take their adventures, their maps, their their ideas and incorporate them into any Palladium Rifts game. Yep. Um, the ideas are all in interchangeable. Right. It, it really is just do I look up the entry for a Samus suit or a Skelebot in my Palladium book? Or do I look it up in my Savage Worlds book? Either way, you just reference whatever is familiar for you. Um, I even wrote an article about this in Rifter 85, if anyone has that. So if you want to play, you want to use Palladium rules to play Savage Rifts adventure material, mm. I have that article in there. And we're going to be making it available very soon, like imminently in the next few days um, to fans uh, so that they can easily bridge that gap. It really just covers some of the differences of how do I handle the concept of arrays when I'm using Palladium or what's a wild card right sure. little things like that to help the palladium fans understand some of those more idiosyncratic things um from savage worlds how to so put it this that. way john doom it's like almost a 200 dollars value for the bundle of holding to me it's a slam dunk in terms of like you know even if even if you're worried and you're like oh i might have to i'm not i'm only familiar you might learn your new favorite system you mm -hmm. might jump in and, and just love it you might just steal the great ideas and look at the pretty art, but it and sounds like it's a it's kind of a slam dunk. If you're feeling altruistic, uh, supporting the mega bundles also contributes to charity. Is that not right? That yes. is true. That is very true. Oh, um, yeah. Well, there you go. The Diana Jones Award Emerging Designer Program, which mm -hmm. sounds incredible, um, it amplifies the voices of up and coming game designers by featuring them during an expenses paid visit to Gen Con, one of those- uh... Expenses paid <laughs> visit to Gen Con. <laughs> Which as we've already established is a great way to, to meet, new people. meet new people, make- um... Eat the food truck. <laughs> <laughs> make professional connections no it's great i think that's wonderful yeah so check out the bundle holding just do it i mean why not right come on have some fun Joe, I, you, um, really, you know you're going to yeah I, I really appreciate you bringing up the bundle and and you guys pointing that out because uh it is really a great deal to get those pdfs yeah. and you have it Absolutely. it's a great way to build your library and uh, just, if you already have these titles it's a great gift Hey, Christmas is coming up. Did you, can you get, forget your parents' Christmas? Get someone you love into your hobby. Your mom? What, what the hell is this? Just, you like it. Trust me. I don't, this isn't the Just read the, I asked read the first four books yeah. and then. Come on. <laughs> Just get drunk. We'll have fun. Uh, but yeah, check that out. Now, also, for other things to check out, Game Changer right now. Uh, right we now. got Pinnacle, Rifts, um, South America, Land of a Thousand Islands, and I believe. Terror on the Dark Frontier box set. These Correct. Are little... Come on. So you can check those out, uh, Game Changer, right now. Did you want to give a, a brief about those? Uh, yeah. Just to kind let, of me, well, let me say. Oh, yeah. Let, let that. Oh, do it. Bring it the on. The art yeah. is fantastic. It's the best art. Pinnacle's art just is getting better and better and better. It's the best art I've seen them produce yet. Yes. Um, High praise. The, the, Great art. The, 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 the books. Um, go from it's like palladium's books are set in like 105 pa and this takes it up to 109 or 110 yeah, it's, PA. it's 109 and well it was actually like 102 103 was that's the there. calendar post the PA calendar is pa post is post apocalyptic so yeah so it, it it's a cool thing that that both savage world players and palladium players can enjoy because it kind of updates what's happening in the world mm. and that's all official material yep um, we worked really hard on that, and that's one of the exciting things that um, I have heard, you know, uh, for Savage Rifts players, this is a, a whole nother continent that you can game in. And we're talking, this is a fan favorite as far as Palladium fans go. Um, we're, again, you're going to have, similar to Atlantis, you're going to have almost as much um, gear as the core Tomorrow Legion Player's Guide. Um, mm -hmm. There's a ton of gear and that you can, you can basically just run 
a whole thing in South America and have a lot of fun. Um, there's, but uh, on the, on, and there's adventure material. Um, there's really great new character uh, types that you can play as like the anti monster. Um, there's a biomancy. Uh, there's the, a new kind of magic. There's all types of stuff. Um, but uh, one of the things that I think people will really enjoy on the palladium side is that if you're familiar with the palladium books, South America one, South America two, this basically is going to function as South America three. Mm. Um, especially for right now, that's what we could get to. Right. Um, and so this, uh, th like Kevin was saying, it, you know, Savage. Well, so when Risk first came out, it was set in the year 101 post-apocalyptic. And over time, the books marched forward through time. So the original South America 1 and 2 were set in 102 and 103 post-apocalyptic. Now, uh, Palladium has gone up to 110 PA. Uh, the Savage Rifts books are all set in 109 PA. So what we did is we it, we, we backfilled we uh, a lot of that that material and a lot of the progression of the timeline there's basically south america has the archon alien invasion uh it has incans uh the gods are back as columbia it has lizard folk it has pirates it has all as you know aztecs you know cities of gold hidden it's in the a forest very right? busy timeline oh it's, wow. it's insane and and i love it and and the the great thing is that this one you see how all these conflicts are playing out and have been playing out um, and it's really great. It's a, not a better time to be a member of the Tomorrow Legion exploring uh, a whole <laughs> new continent. Um, we're, we're, but we're really excited about it because it is official Rifts lore. And you will see that in future Palladium Rifts books as well. Um, as well as we have, uh, well, I'll, I'll stop there on the South America front. <laughs> Don't want to give too much. Mm -hmm. Can't give it all away. The oh, point is, go check it out. Game Changers right now. Uh, I think you can get it through the Pinnacle site, or sorry, pegging.com slash campaigns. I'm sure yeah. you'll find it there. Uh, it's very easy. You can navigate there from the front page. Yep. And there's also the other thing that we're really excited about is Terror on the Dark Frontier. This is the first ever Rifts box campaign set. Mm -hmm. The has never done one. And so Kevin, me, Kevin, Shane, we're really excited about this one. Uh, you get to uh, explore the... Uh, the frontier region <laughs> of North America, <laughs> um, of the New West, uh, where the coalition is butting up against the Comanche Preserve, as well as there's uh, uh, Simvan uh, clan, which are cannibalistic aliens roaming around. There's the first apocalyptic cavalry making their mess. So there's all types of stuff going on, and you have to come in the middle of it and figure out what is going wrong. Something has gone very wrong on the frontier, and uh, the landscape is starting to turn ugly, and there's a lot of mysteries to resolve. But uh, all of our playtesters have been go gaga over it. Um, we have the region broken down into multiple sections. Each one has its own um, travel encounter tables for people that are familiar with the Savage Worlds travel rules, and and, and as well as combat encounter tables. Um, there's a lot of Savage Tales and one-off things that you can go do in the different regions, or you can, you know, intersperse that amongst the plot point campaign that we have, which um, I think people are really going to enjoy. Really, really great material um, by a lot of talented writers. So, Very cool. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Is the way <laughs> putting that. What are the exact components of the box set? Oh, there we go. Boom, bam. Never mind. We, so we got oh, a box. Is, yeah, <laughs> Look at it all. <laughs> I see I standees. I see. Yeah. yeah this so is yeah, the, the, the standees, the pawns, those are, uh, let me see, I have a little note here to make sure I get this right because I sometimes forget details. They're laminated die cut punch board with front and back art. They're beautiful, beautiful when you see them on a tabletop. Nice. Um, there's uh, the, the box set comes with uh, four new maps. The South America comes with one or two new maps front and back. Uh, one map to unfold front and back, two to unfold front and back um, in the the uh, terror box set. Um, there, the Zerif's pawn set two, which has a I don't know a bajillion pawns. Uh, it's very similar in size to the original uh, Rift's pawn set, which I think had eight sheets of pawns, uh, over a hundred pawns. And this one is is similarly sized. Plus, Terror on the Dark Frontier has a bunch of pawns for monsters and 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 stuff that's just in that campaign set, and that also includes a lot of uh, classic Rift's monsters. Uh, like the Black Fairy, the Black Wing Monster Men. Uh, so there's a lot of really cool stuff for old school Rifts fans as well. To finally, we got to finally bring that to you in this box set. Here's a great question while we're on it. Does Terror start at Novice and how high will it take the players? Uh, it's not 
designed to specifically take you to a certain rank. But yes, it's definitely uh, designed for novice adventurers to be able to jump in um, and get in on that train. <laughs> um, with Rifts, you know, uh, we do our best to design the the encounters so that it's like, well, if there are this many heroes, right, you, you need this many of this or that, um, as opposed to just having like 10 of something, right? Sure, um, buildable. Uh, encounter right so it, it scales with party size um but with rifts it can also be tough because sometimes you'll have if your character group is a glitter boy a hatchling dragon and a combat cyborg and a cyber knight those are all combat monsters right um another group might have uh you know uh an operator and a wilderness scout and a rogue scientist right and they're not as combat heavy so game masters will need to kind of massage uh the details of um, especially some of those combat encounters to match. But in general, I, it's really great for a group to start there and work through the main campaign. I would say if they do start as novice, make sure you pepper in some extra adventures amongst, amongst the plot point campaign because the la the final battle or two oh. is not easy. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it is definitely terrifying and <laughs> and scary and meant to be so. Um, everything so that you the want. But don't worry, Sounds we, we great. provide you with all the, the, the plot point details about how the world ends and everything goes to crap <laughs> if you fail. So don't even worry about it. Just, just meet Grinder the players there through it. That's <laughs> the way to do it. As long as it's the final battle, yeah. doesn't really right. matter if you just you know? smash them into pulp. There's many, many reasons <laughs> to do it. Well, that's really exciting. And again, you can check that out, uh, Game Changers, right now, or Game Changer, uh, peginc.com campaigns. You can check out both of those. Terror on the Dark Front box set and the Rifts uh, South America. Uh, and then again, Bundle of Holdings. You just, you just like got all this stuff. Get so all this great goodies that you can get for convergence of a lot of things coming, yeah. you know, to yeah. fruition at the same time. I mean, what better time? It's the holiday season, you know? Right. Exactly. Spend a little extra money. Forget your kids. Buy yourself <laughs> something nice. Christmas isn't for kids. Get yourself something. Well, no, Christmas you know what? is it's for It's the perfect us. time to get your kids in a role play. Hey, that's true. If right. they're old enough to hold the dice, they're old enough to die. That's uh, right. In, in a Rifts game, I should clarify. In a Rifts game. <laughs> it's well, really I, good for teaching math skills, it honestly. It is great for teaching math. That's and reading. Sure. And, and reading. geology. Yeah. And yeah. reading. And Those geology. Geography. Yep. And history, and uh, incorrect you know what? history. We don't need to send Henry to school anymore. We're just going to keep him home and play. Keep him home just, and get him to teach. Absolutely. Just play D &D yeah. Mm -hmm. Just hook awesome. up to World of Warcraft. It's the same yeah. thing. Um, no, um, fine. So, <laughs> but one of the things I do want to point out with this, though, is that um, the Game Changer is running until the first week of January. So, yeah. it, you know, one of those things that, hey, if you, Christmas is hitting you hard. Wait till you get some of that grandma money, right? And then you can go yeah. spend it on the game changer. At grandma grand. Um, yeah, right. Uh, right. But also 18 days on the bundle of holding as well. So yeah, right. Kinda... So we have the bundle of holding and the Titan Robotics Kickstarter. The Kickstarter and the really cool stuff, the really cool like kind of package deals you can get, you know, that is over. But with the with um, the uh, backer cool. kit, you can definitely jump in and, and a la carte a lot of the things that are important for you. Yeah, because you guys had like, uh, was it poker cards? There were other little add-ons. Yes, yes. Yeah, we have, we have a, a poker card deck that I made um, with some great art. Um, and uh, we've got uh, the the a collected edition of uh, the Cyberworks collection. So if you're new to um, this or you're, or you're a fan that's building or rebuilding a, a collection, we have a lot of those. Um, this is a you can get an opportunity to get Sourcebook one, Sourcebook two, uh, Sourcebook Shamarian Nation, and um, important parts of Rift's aftermath and a little bit of Rifter material in one big hardcover collector collector's edition yeah. um so a lot of fans are really excited about that because i don't know we had a lot of people say this you know this is my favorite the whole archie plot right the whole mm -hmm. archie plot and subplot uh the various subplots is and is, i mean is, look is we're coming into 2023 Probably. give yourself a new year's resolution play more games right play more rifts be like i'm going to be more motivated to get my friends together and to do that you need something to play so you might as well. So really, you're doing yourself a favor for your New Year's resolution. Mm -hmm. If you're you're helping yourself, we got it all figured out for you guys. We figured out for you. I don't know. Can did your job. There you go. Not you, uh, the people. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do your job. Oh my no, we goodness. We can't do your job. I don't want to do it. Absolutely not. Um, Sounds like a lot of work. 
this has been really uh, exciting and enlightening and wonderful to meet uh, both of you. And as, as we wind down here, uh, we do want to talk a little bit about uh, frivolousness, uh, n nonsense, because we have been doing this for a while now. And one of the things that we love, 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 my sometimes my favorite part, mm -hmm. is we like to end each interview, hangout, show, whatever you want to call it, uh, by asking you, each of you, um, what you're enjoying and this can be anything. I mean, we've had people on and they've told us the book they enjoyed, the TV show they're loving, uh, a new brand of soft drink they found, or a snack that just happened to be at their local convenience store. And really, this is just an opportunity to share whatever clever niche or great book or great thing that you're just enjoying with the people that are watching who are looking for something to... Uh, be obsessed with. To be obsessed with or enjoy. We've had people recommend weird YouTube channels of like mm -hmm. woodworking and cooking and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's a nice way to kind of just close out the interview. So, Sean, uh, we'll start with you. What is something that you are just really enjoying right now? It could be anything across the board well um one of the, there's two things that i think i'm enjoying right now just randomly uh i, I really enjoyed the new andor uh tv show i heard oh, great things yeah no spoilers, no spoilers. The Mandalorian. yeah no spoilers but but it's definitely worth a watch um mm -hmm. you know there's certain after i worked at uh we'll just say put it this way after i worked at the nsa and decided to quit that job um i uh you know was never happier than when i got read out of that program i got to leave but um mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> i'll say that andor uh you know some uh, like uh captain america winter soldier there's some some fiction that i've seen that i'm like wow okay this is has an important underlying theme that i really mm. appreciate um and then um i would also say that i really have been enjoying RimWorld. um that's one of my favorite computer games um yeah and it's uh, by Tynan Sylvester. He's he's a real great game designer. And the new uh, biotech DLC has uh, I'm, I basically have created my own riffs setting through mods. Awesome. Um, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> but I have a lot of fun, fun playing RimWorld. Uh, Dwarf Fortress also just dropped on Steam. I was going to um, say Dwarf because that's a very similar to RimWorld. Very similar, and it's kind of the OG yeah. and it's gotten crazy yeah I i'm really proud RimWorld. also for the the mod the, the steam uh workshop on that one so i'm i'm gonna like let that sit fallow for a little while because people are coming out with amazing mods at, yeah. a, at, a, at a, a a frenzied pace for that a few as well. months it'll just be so, top 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 tier stuff right it'll i keep be seeing like it in my like, where I have like recommended list yeah, same, yeah. but i know that it's one of those games that if i start it i'm just gonna lose just, 200 just hours yeah they're so easy to do that <laughs> we've got, got it in satisfactory in for a long so. time <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 that's awesome great recommendations andor and RimWorld classic um, very cool uh i was gonna say classic RimWorld, still pretty new but anyway uh kevin what about you what are you enjoying what are you digging yeah, I, you know we have a lot of similar interests, so I, I, I would agree, you know, The Mandalorian, anyone who hasn't seen that, you need to see it. Mm -hmm. um, Andor is great. Uh, I enjoy most of the Marvel material um, that, that's that been coming out, um, especially, uh, you know, the, the multiverse stuff they've been doing. That, that's been mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of really good comic books. If you're looking for something kind of offbeat, um, Little Monsters by Image Comics and mm. Black Feathers. Those are interesting horror-ish with a different twist. Mm. Um, th those are pretty cool. Um, I've been enjoying Marvel's Daredevil. That's been really good, too. Mm. Um, kind of hot and cold on their Dark Crisis but uh, for, by DC. But it, it's mostly good, I you, think. You really enjoyed The Last Ronin as well, right? Oh God! Yeah, yeah. The, the turtle, the last Ronin. He looked over there because he gave me a copy yeah, of it. Yeah, there someplace. I was trying to grab it, it and yeah. hold it up, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, so well done. It, it was Kevin Eastman and, and the artist they got. I forget the guy's name. I think it's actually two brothers who did the art. Mwah. It's fantastic. One of the best comic books I've read. It, it's available now as uh, a hardcover collected, and I think it's supposed to come out as a soft cover later. But it's. And he knows Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. It's so, looking you know. great. Oh, wow. um, it's you. one of the best turtle products in decades. Wow. 
cool. Harlan, I can see you Googling yeah, frantically. I'm introduction <laughs> by Robert Rodriguez. Yeah, the yeah, last Roman, great. I mean, this is why we ask because honestly, half the time I walk away with being like, okay, cool. I want to check that out. <laughs> I mean, the other thing the idea, I would say that people should check out if you want to see um, a really cool book about monsters and monster hunting. Uh, this guy just finished a book called Creature Feature for Beyond the Supernatural. Um, hey. Cool. And I mean, unironically, no. I mean, I, I, I read awesome. it. The, the material I read, I was just like, this is really cool. And I know that a lot of Savage Worlds play uh, players and game masters are looking to up their game. And this is this definitely has some great uh, GM advice in the book as well. So a lot about go. monsters and hunting and lairs and killing fields or their their hunting grounds and yeah hells so. yeah where can they get that and your website or palladiumbooks.com palladiumbooks.com yeah, click on store and you can uh you can pick that up it's out now or in one of our christmas surprise packages. or one of our christmas surprise packages you so never for 58 dollars which you can also get on our website 58 dollars you get over a hundred dollars worth of stuff um and it's if you want it can all be signed uh kevin plays santa so you give us your wish list uh you know, and we've got over two, we've got almost 300 books. So, you know, just yeah. figure out whatever it is that you don't have yet that you're interested in. And, or if you, a lot of people will get uh, Christmas surprise packages for their players, right? So mm. we've had a little order four, but they're like, this one guy likes this or is interested in this. Yeah. this you know, this, you know, my wife, blah, blah, blah. So, um, and Kevin picks all of those for the fans. We sign all the books if you, you check the little button if you want it signed or not. And that's cool. Um, it's great. And I just want to say before this all ends is that, the fans are great. If you see me, you don't seem to like suddenly laugh or giggle or it's because I'm reading some of the comments, which are great. I, I appreciate every, all the comments. Absolutely. Were awesome. Oh yeah. We appreciate everybody watching along and uh, hanging out with us during this time. Uh, absolutely. Shane and Sean. God, what's with all the Shane and Sean? Uh, it's the way it no, is. The way the world works now. It's the way it is. It's run by the shoes. Need more Kevin. Mm -hmm. Get on board or get out of the way. Well, uh, that is shows too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's it uh, for us. I guess this year uh, we're going to be off next week. Uh, so this is the last one of the year. Uh, thank you so much to uh, Sean and Kevin for hanging out with us tonight. It's an absolute blast. And I know you, Misha. People love you. Uh, make sure you can check out all of those awesome things that you can purchase and all the links that we've dropped during this video, as well as the link of uh, the description of this video. Probably should have them. If not, Chris will do that, I know. Um, but I uh, hope you have a, a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year, all that wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, and again, thank you so much for hanging out with us, and we will Thanks see you, thank you next year, everybody. Have a wonderful one. So long. Bye, guys.